Hello and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program video and today's video I'm going to be showing off a design I have made for what the Deep Space Starship variant may end up looking like if slash when it ever flies. I really hope it does fly because it's really cool. So um, first thing you'll probably notice we're going to be taking a little bit of a test mission out to um, out to Saturn or Sarnus as it's called uh, in KSP or in the mod that I have. Um, the, the most obvious thing is A, the coloring is a little different and B, there's no fins. What the, what the fins? Where'd they go? What the, oh my gosh, what Starship doesn't look like Starship, right? So I will explain all of the design changes I have made and the rationale for why I think this is probably what it would end up looking like, at least sort of kind of close to what it'll look like. There's been a few different concepts made. Uh, Everyday Astronaut did one in one of his videos. Um, there have been the other few renders of what it may end up looking like. Um, I know Elon said he wants to do um, a deep space starship for like big giant telescopes, but like it'd be cool to send just any, because Starship has orbital refueling capabilities, right? So you guys are, uh, are boosted landing. Um, so basically you can send, just if you can refill a starship to full, you can send ridiculous payloads out to, uh, out to the outer planets. Um, you know, like Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, the funny name one. So... That's what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna be setting up like what I think would be a pretty interesting payload as soon as we get out there. Um, but yeah, like giant telescopes would be a reason. Um, but or like some like a rover or you know um, a big probe or something like that, right? Uh, these are all reasons to have a, a tanker starship or a, a deep space starship. Uh, but so the biggest thing, right, is you don't have fins. That's really the biggest. There's a lot of weight saving things because you can't come back from like the like Saturn or Jupiter because it's so far away it would take an eternity um, and the entry velocity is so high you would just melt you wouldn't be able you wouldn't be able to survive entry it's just not possible right um, so we have to make some changes one one big change aside from the flaps is the engine design I think this is a better engine design because we are not coming back in for landing we don't need any sea level engines as you can notice I do have one sea level engine so the reason for that is the vacuum engines cannot gimbal so basically what I'm gonna demonstrate now is there's six of them so what if a vacuum engine were to just die right vacuum engine death oh no it failed we're turning we're turning oh no we can turn on the sea level engine we can gimbal so that's basically my rationale for why we have a sea level engine and there's six vacuum engines right so with no sea level engines um they you don't have the because what will, what they'll likely end up doing for like uh the standard starship launches is they'll be lighting all three vacuums in all three sea levels um, at launch. And now that you can see we're going to get into orbit, I'm going to actually turn back on our quote-unquote failed engine. Um, and then we're going to be actually ditching the sea level engine, because now that we're in space, you wouldn't need it. And if that engine were actually failed, you would just turn off an opposite engine on the other side of the vehicle. Um, so essentially, uh, if you only have three engines, if you only have, if you have all six firing, because you need the, you need the thrust to weight ratio with um, all six, or else if you just use the vacuums on a, like a normal starship, you, uh, you just won't make it. You will you will you will fall out of the sky and because they don't have enough thrust. It's just a three. Um, by the way, if you're wondering why, I'm, I'm like actually way behind the actual video. Um, <laughs> I, I, I meant to be further along in my commentary at this point, but I don't know, it's too rambly, right? This is our refueling starship. I'm gonna be trying trying to go pretty quick through this launch uh, because it is just a refueling launch. You guys have seen a starship launch before. Um, huge thanks to Black Shadow slash uh, SpaceX Gamer for making this super awesome. Thank you for the craft. Um, also, you guys have subscribed. Quick plugs. Uh, subscribe, join my Discord, blah, 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 blah. Do all the things that I like. Join my Patreon, get merch, blah, 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 insert whatever YouTubers say here, right? Anyway, I want to get back to talking about Starship. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for all the support. You guys are awesome. Anyway, back to Starship. I swear, I'm talking at like 10,000 words a minute here. Got a lot to say. Short to video. Let me just type it. Anyway, uh, engines. So, without the six engines, so for removing the sea levels, then you don't have as much stress, right? So, what you would end up doing then is I said, hey, well, we could just have like uh, an extra vacuum engine. But then I thought, why not just add six vacuum engines? So the reason I have six vacuums um, is A, uh, v v Raptors don't weigh that much. So there's not like a huge penalty to adding more engines. And like B, they, the more engines you add is the more thrust you get, right? We're, we are firing six engines. Um, there's seven engines, which is one more than the normal uh, Starship would have, but we're firing six engines, so you're getting about as much thrust as you normally would from a uh, standard Starship, um, which is why I went with six vacuums. And also that gives you better engine out capability, because let's say you have four four vacuum engines. If you have four vacuum engines, okay, one dies, then you can use the sea level engine to correct, but if a second one dies, you know, then, then, you're, then you're getting into some spicy territory, then you're running into low thrust situations with six vacuums you could have three of them probably fail and you'd be all right because you, you you only need well i'm like speed running please 
We've refueled, by the way. We have refueled and our refueling starship is coming back in for a landing. Sorry, I did like a super quick refueling kind of montage here. So, um, yeah, that's come back in for landing. By the way, Chaos Beer Dynamics suck. This thing is really hard to control. It's just because there are a bunch of grip pads and flags and stuff, which is complicated things. It will be a very, um, very obvious quick save and quick load. Anyway, I'm getting way too rambly about these stupid engines. All right, so. It gets more engine out capability. Um, so the reason for the sea level is kind of the whole MO of SpaceX is let's try and be fast and simple, right? So why would you... Also, if you're doing six vacuums, they're all clumped super close together, so you can't really gimbal them. If you want them to gimbal, it'll be really hard. So if you lose an engine, you need a lot of gimbal authority, and what would end up happening is you need to... If you lost one engine, you need to gimbal the correct for the offset thrust, and because there's so many engines, the engines end up hitting each other. So you basically need a small engine, so you get to put a sea level right in the middle. Uh, that That's why I went for sea level instead of another engine. And there's already um, gimbal mounts for sea level engines. There are not gimbal mounts for vacuum engines. So the idea is, yeah. And then you would jettison the engine uh, just before you're in orbit. Uh, or basically while you're in orbit. And here it is coming for landing. Bit of a thumper, bit of a Ryanair, but uh, it made it down. Um, now we're going to start planning our mission out to Sarnus, which is KSP's version of Saturn, um, using a mod called Outer Planets Mod. Super great mod. I'll link it in the description if you want to go check it out. Very much recommend. Great mod. It adds uh, all the basically Kerbalized versions. Not really Kerbalized, but uh, they're, the moons are Kerbalized, but the planets themselves do resemble you know, the outermost planets. So I think that's most of the reason why I have six engines. Um, and then you would ditch the seal because you don't need because once you're in orbit um you, the thrust rate ratio doesn't really matter so you can you can just have even two engines running if you wanted um so that's basically the first design change um that's probably the, the biggest aside from removing the fins so removing the fins and removing the header tanks because you're not landing that adds actually quite a bit of extra payload volume so which is really useful um elon has said like an expendable starship would launch like something ridiculous like 200 tons into orbit it's insane so and oh we're in saturn very fancy uh, so that, yeah, so you can add, that's another big bonus. Also, you can notice I have like three different colors on my thing. There is the solar panel, white, silver. I'm actually now setting up my encounter with, uh, one of the moons. I've literally just forgotten the name. It's the one that's meant to resemble, uh, Titan. I'm in the Outer Planets mod. It's not exactly like Titan, uh, but it, it's close enough. Um, it's, it's like a snowy version of Titan, but the general the atmosphere and the, uh, the size of the planet or the moon is uh, relatively uh, quite similar. Um, it's called Tecto. There it is. I can see it on screen there. Um, so yeah, uh, so the bottom area is solar panels. Um, solar panels aren't super useful when you're out, but they still give you a little bit of power uh, when you're out um, this far away from the sun. Um, so there's also a bunch of RTGs. The solar panels are mainly for when you're closer in. Um, but yeah, so then the middle area is white. Middle area is white because white paint um, will reflect light, make it harder um, for boil off because we need to do burns many years into this mission. And if you have your propellant boiling off, basically, because it's cryogenic, it tends to boil off. The issue, that creates issues, right? Because um, you won't have any propellant to do your insertion. It's the same thing with the, uh, the Lunar Starship. It's white. The design change I made is the whole thing is not white. Only the bit that covers the fuel tank is white. See, the nose cone area where the cargo bay and all that stuff is, by the way, our pilot's a plane, no way, is not white because there is no fuel under there, nothing to protect, no nothing's going to boil off, just added weight, don't need it. So, um, yeah, it's uh, just normal silver. And here's me being an absolute meme because I did not check how fat these wings were and it is like scrunched right up at the edge of the payload bay. So... <gasps> Uh, you know, welcome to Kerbal Space Program. We got to do it the Kerbal way. We got to like wobble, wiggle our little plane out of here. Um, and so actually, I thought I was going to have to redo the mission, but it actually, if we do enough wiggly wobbling, it actually, it manages to, there it goes. We SpaceX approved procedure. So yeah, we're going to, we have this little science plane. I thought it'd be fun. Space planes are really fun. I don't know, trying to land, because the, at, so the reason I did the planes, because the atmosphere on this, uh, this tech dope is super, super interesting, makes flying really fun, and there we go, closing up the payload bay. Starship will now drift on into the abyss, left there eternally. Um, yeah, but it's not coming back, because it doesn't have any sort of heat shield, and heat shield adds loads of weight, which is another thing that we don't have, so. I think I've managed to get to all the major points, uh, major differences, and why my rationale for them. I think, you know, some concluding thoughts here as we watch our landing. 
uh, which is really fun, by the way. You'll see if we get to the end of that. Like, also, I have my probe core rotator wrong, which I swear I fixed, but I must not have saved it, and I didn't really want to restart from here. So, geez, I feel like I've been, like, talking ridiculously fast. Whew, get to calm down here. Uh, get to relax. So, essentially, Deep Space Starship, super cool, very epic. Biggest difference would be with the engines and the flap design. Also, the color is a little bit different. Hopefully, if you have any some better ideas, uh, let me know what you think would be some other ideas as to how they might do it. I really hope they do. It'd be really fun to see this. It'd be basically the, uh, there'd be cargo, um, human starship, fuel tanker starship, lunar starship, and now deep space starship. Super cool. We'd be really excited to see super, uh, to see deep space starship. Uh, it'd probably be years out, but it seems like quite a, you just take the flaps off and you just color it a little differently. Add some paint. Seems fine. I feel like it'd be a fairly low effort. And then someone could put a really cool telescope or a plane and we could, you know, I thought about putting a Kerbal on here, but I realized that'd be kind of mean because there is literally no hope for this Kerbal to ever get back. Um, so we're just, it's going to be an uncrewed uh, science plane. You're never testing the atmosphere. I also have a little science module on there. Um, and you could look how slow we're flying. We're going, this thing, by the way, um, it lands at around 55 meters a second on curb. And it's flying perfectly at like 20 meters a second. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. The atmosphere is crazy thick and there is not a lot of gravity. It's like, imagine um, Kerbal, like Kerbin's atmosphere, a little bit stronger than Kerbin's atmosphere, but with the gravity of the Mun, and there we are just touching down at like five meters a second. It's ridiculous. You can look, you, like, <laughs> you have so much aerodynamic control that we, yeah, we just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ha ha hoo hee ha. So, and here we go. And now I just start to mess around and do stupid things because I realize that I can, like, almost basically fly going zero meters a second. Tis very weird, but that is our mission completed. Worked perfectly. Mostly, except for the plane getting stuck in the. That was, that, that was not part of the plan. <laughs> Uh, anyway, on screen here in just a moment is going to be all of the channel members. Big thanks to all the channel members. If you want to become a member, get the join button below. If you want to become a Patreon, there's all the Patreons on screen. Thanks to everyone who has supported the channel. That's going to be it for me today. I'd like to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please join our comment to the video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.